Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Proactivity Open P1AM Industrial Arduino PID Control. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at the PID loop itself and this PID library is available within the Arduino IDE and the, the library manager. So if we call that up, here we go, and we go to um, sketch and then include library, we go to uh, manage libraries and when that's called up, if we just do a quick search on PID, which stands for Proportional, Deriv Integral, and Derivative. And it's a way of controlling a set point or a variable uh, other than on or off. So there, again, there's links in the description that will actually show you um, how PID actually works. So this is the PID loop we're using. Um, and if it's not installed, then we select the version and install it. So currently right now the version is 1.2.0 and this is, has been installed. So as it says, a PID controller uh, seeks to keep some input variable close to the desired set point by adjusting an output. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing with a heater and a uh, basically a cup of water. So that is the library. So let's just close that down. And now let's take a look at our hardware that we have. And on our hardware, let's call it up. All right. Here we go. What you will see is here's my uh, Proactivity Open P1AM100. I do have a series of analog in out um, my uh, relay output card another combination input and output DC in relay out I have a simulator input card and I have my thermocouple card which we talked about last time so what we're doing is taking our thermocouple card and we're measuring the uh, temperature of this um, glass of water or a cup of water and we're taking our uh, first uh, output here of our relay output and we are going to a immersion heater it's located right here within the cup now this is controlled via our um, we're breaking into the circuit for 120 volt and controlling that immersion heater to heat that that cup of water up so basically we have our control loop so as we detect the temperature we put a set point in we read the set point through our, thermo, our thermocouple wire here, our J-type. Then we either turn on and off the relay output based on our temperature to control that temperature. So that is our closed loop system. And so if we just take a look, there is our cup of water. And now let's take a look quickly at the program itself. So we're using actually productivity blocks here we go and let's go right to the top here you can see that we are using our P1 modules they're set for true and this program is actually based on the one we did for the P1000 expansion uh, part 2 so we've enabled all of the different functions like we've done our um, making sure our modules are all there and making sure our watchdog timer is active so that we um, can make sure that uh, nothing happens within the program. So we set our variables to true. We have our subroutine initialize, and then we have our subroutine uh, check for our P1000 expansion modules. And if we look at the initialize and in, in expansion, they're down here. My initialize here, all I'm doing is setting a, a variable called uh, previous milliseconds. And then we have a set CPU light, we're going to do low. And then we're going to turn our output set points or our relay outputs to off. 
So that's basically all of our all of our uh, subroutine initialize will do. Then we have our subroutine check expansion modules. So what we're doing here is we are using the roll call and what we do is check the five expansion cards that we have located on our, our industrial Arduino. And these are the cards listed here, including our last one, our thermocouple card. And if that is okay, then it allows this loop to pass. If not, what it will do is blink the LED light for us on and off. So it's stopping our program altogether. So that is our, our loop there. Then we have our configuration for our thermocouple card. So slot number five. And once again, we get the slot by the unit number. So this is uh, one, two, three, four, five. We're looking at channel one, and we're saying if we have a burnout, then we go to the minimum scale of our, of our output on, and it's in degree C. And our input one channel is a J-type thermocouple. So that is um, part of that setup. And then what we also do is on the library, we actually have to declare our PID loop or our PID. So we include PID version one, um, and that tells us to use that library function that we just showed. Then what we do is specify um, our initial links and initial PID tuning parameters. So my PID, and I look at my present value temperature, and then which is uh, uh, coming in through our thermocouple. And then we look at our PID output, we specify it. Then we specify our set, set value PID loop. And then this is our P, I, and D, which is 50, 245, and 40. And it's direct control um, as opposed to reverse control. Direct control means that um, as I heat things up, the set point, um, or if I'm above the set point, it's better to look at it that way. Then I have to decrease. So it's directly, and if it's, um, Above the set point, I have to increase. So things that you would use uh, reverse control would be things like cooling, so like an air conditioner, whereas we're using a heater, which is going to be direct control. So once we have that specified, then we can set up our variables for that loop, as we mentioned, PID loop. We're going to set the value of 90. Then our double, we're going to set double PID output which can be zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the control period for our relay output. And that is going to be called window size, which is going to be 200 milliseconds, so two seconds. So what's going to happen is we're going to take a look at that output that we have to uh, monitor of our PID loop. And it's going to split that 200 milliseconds up to a portion of that to turn the relay on. And that's how we do proportional control on the relay itself. So then we have our set, set long, we have a window start time, and we go off our run milliseconds. This way we can keep track and um, always go the next 200 milliseconds over. Then what we do is we set the PID output limit to match the relay control period in milliseconds. So what we do is we set our output limits. Our window size will be the 200 milliseconds, so our output will actually be set between zero and 200. Then we turn on our PID loop to automatic, and we start our monitoring, serial monitor. Now we go back to our basic loop here, and we look for our CPU switch. If it's set on or high, then what we do is turn the LED light on or high. Then what we do is we get our points from our input uh, channel slot four so this is our simulator module so we get those points in and once we have the points in then we also read our present value or our pv value of our temperature this will determine what the current temperature is right now then what we do is turn on if we turn on switch number one we look for that condition and if we have that condition then what we do is we will turn on 
just a relay indication that everything's working is the second relay of this output card here. So then we execute our PID loop by using the uh, my PID compute. We set our now function as the current runtime. And then we set our control cycle window size. So if now minus the start window time is greater than the window size, then we take the window start time and we add the window size to it. So that's always given us our two second intervals that we're using for control. Then once the PID, we look at it and we actually uh, will turn it on and off based on the control cycle or that period or the window size. So if our PID output is greater than the window now minus the window start time, then we turn on our output relay, which is the third slot first channel. One, two, third slot first channel output right here. So it will actually oscillate that output relay to control our temperature. If it's not on, then we turn it off. So that's basically our, our PID loop. Then what we do is we will look for our uh, print to serial monitor just to see what we actually are, are doing with our loop. So we have our present value. We show our um, temperature. Then we have our set value. We show our set value for our loop and then we show our PID output so we can monitor it. Now, if the switch is off, then we have our set point. Um, we turn um, our outputs off, both, um, both relays, uh, one and two, to indicate that we have an off condition for that relay. And we do that, we also then print our present value so we can actually see the temperature as, as it's falling. Then we do our initial subroutine and then we check our modules at the end of every scan. So that is basically our program. So once we can verify that, and once it's verified, we will upload this to our P1AM controller. There we go. And now our program's uploaded. We can now look at our serial monitor. And here is our PID loop running right now. You can see our temperature is being controlled between 89.7 and 90.5. So my relay is actually controlling it right here and it's turning on and off that heater based on that relay condition and you can see the output and as the output goes closer to the 90 then that output range starts dropping off showing indication less and less of our heater is required there you all started dropping now so now you can see that output dropping And this is what it actually looks like inside. Here's my placement of my heater and my thermocouple. And just to show you how, uh, how close that temperature is within the one degree, I'll add a little more water to our cup here. And just that little bit of water, you can see that it's now taken our, our temperature down to about 84. So about six degrees, seven degrees difference as soon as I add a little bit. So it's actually quite sensitive and it's actually controlling very well. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. 
remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.